What's up, guys? What's going on, Joe? Shout yeah. out Unitas first. There you go. M main event, I mean, uh, just talk about the week. I know the, the fight is what really matters, but the whole experience itself is, you know, kind of an accomplishment in the career. So what's it, uh, what's it like for you? It's another fight, John. Um, doesn't matter if we were opening the card or the last on the card. I haven't put any emphasis on being the main event. Uh, I would say the biggest one that I did was it's, it's pretty surreal. I get pretty choked up seeing myself on a poster, uh, especially from where I come from and the doubts that have, uh, you know, just transpired along this career that I've been on, and uh, I'm super grateful for it. And I got like 20 of my, my, my most loved people out here, so uh, I got almost my whole team out here. That means the most to me. You know, I think you're treating it right. At the end of the day, a fight's a fight, no matter where you're on the card, right? But are you letting yourself soak it in at all? Like you said, the, the name on the poster, the added interviews, just, I mean, the, a UFC main event. Not everybody gets to do that. I mean, look, I think I'm good on the mic. I think I'm good doing my job, doing good on these interviews. You know, I don't really care to do them um, necessarily. Like, I wouldn't go out of my way to do them, but, you know, it's a part of my job, and I could be working a 9-to-5 that I know I would get fired from. So, yeah, I am appreciative. Uh, I'm thankful to be here, and, again, I'm thankful for my whole team being out here, you know, and um, that's what's most important. You know, I, I get to bring the people that I get to choose, call, choose to call family, and, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm taking it in as much as I can without being distracted, if that makes sense. It does. I feel like a lot of people are kind of jumping on the Joe Pfeiffer bandwagon. But I know, like, coming off the Contender Series, the Dana White attention, you feel like, man, I put a target on my back. What about this? Getting this main event slot early in your career, a lot of guys have to put in a lot more time. Do you feel like, you know, your, your fellow guys in the division are looking at you like, who's this guy? Why does he deserve that? Do you feel like this puts a target on you even more? Fuck him. Why do I care? I mean, the target on my back was people discrediting – Dana White saying be Joe Pfeiffer without understanding the message that I interpreted it as. I don't think it was be me fight-wise. It was be Joe Pfeiffer. The kid got turned away, broke his arm almost two years out. My career was supposed to be over, okay? Over. Not fucking hurt. Over. I had to get two major surgeries. I, I was told I had a 30% chance of success. I still lost like half a fucking inch on my reach. And, uh, yeah, I mean, dude. I wasn't supposed to make it, and I came back. That's that's what that message is. And then I didn't even have the best performance when I won my contract. It's just I fought with emotion. I fought with passion. You could see it. Like, I wanted to win. You know, I was I – was, my whole life rode on that. My whole life's success, the whole reason I'm here is because of that. You know, so – and because I had – my team that I joined and, and they made me better and I was prepared for it. So, and then now it's like, I don't remember the other half of your question other than like being the fucking main event, but, or fighting for the top 10, or maybe I'm not deserving. I think like, right. It's, it's coming quick, but why, why am I not deserving? I would, I would question that. I, I, I talk my shit. I back it up. I, everything that I say here, everybody can make clickbait and a meme if I lost, you know, and, and I'm not saying I can't lose, but uh, you know, Dare to say what you feel, and uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm confident in what I say. I'm confident in what I believe. It's not something I convince myself to believe. You guys ask me a question, I try to give it to you as honestly as I feel, and sometimes I'm up, down, up, down, but that's how I give it to you guys. So, yeah, I mean, I deserve to be here because I'm active. I talk uh, truthfully and truly, and, uh, I mean, I, I would even watch me if I wasn't in the UFC, so... And I say that humbly. I'm not saying that as an arrogant prick. No, well said. Uh, all right, Jack, as an opponent, veteran of the game, right, fought some of the best of the best in the division. I mean, what do you think about what he presents to you as an opponent? Jack's good everywhere, not great at any one thing. Um, he's got good cardio. He's got good boxing. He's got good kickboxing. He's got good grappling. But I don't see anything in that man's <clears throat> skill set that I think he will ever be a champion or title challenger again. Um, and I think all the pressure is on him. So um, I think he's a good dude outside of the fight, but I don't like him because he's trying to take my other half, and uh, he's not my fucking friend. Yeah. Any changes in your preparation, your approach, knowing that this is a five-round fight, knowing that this is a, a top-ranked guy? I mean, have you made any adjustments, or is this just a, another training camp? Yeah, I mean, I made adjustments as far as my approach to this fight. You know, stylistically, Jack's a new challenge. And, uh, you know, I don't care that he's fought some of the best. He's lost to some of the best. Um, 
And that's, that's, this is a fight, you know, I don't care that your number, like he, he keeps saying, one of the things he kept saying in the promo, it's the only video that I've watched is that he's not scared of me. And he must have said it like two or three times and I'm like, look homie, you are scared of me, you won't stand in the pocket and trade with me. And that's why you're saying it, because this isn't about who's afraid of who, this is about who can beat who. It doesn't matter if you're scared or not, often I'm nervous and very nervous going into a fight anyway. So yeah, I mean like, I think I think Jack's got a lot of pressure on him right now, and uh, he's tough, but I don't think he's that great. A lot of people are making a big deal about this being a main event, but I think maybe more meaningful. I mean, you're fighting number 11 in the division, right? So, I mean, you win there, all of a sudden we're talking about top 10 type spots and top 10 opponents. I mean, have you let that sink in? Is is, is there an excitement? Is there a, I mean, what's, what's the feeling knowing? I mean, this could bring a very high ranking with an impressive victory. I am on a new contract. That is the most exciting for me, and that's what I care about. Um, I don't give a shit about the rankings. Um, they often don't stand very true, um, and I don't think that because you have a ranking that you're a better fighter than you are. Um, me and Jack could be opening as the first fight on this card. It's still a fight. We could be the main event. It's still a fight. When that cage door closes and they go bing, bing, it's – it's down to him and me and all the promo videos don't matter and all the other bullshit of who he's fought and blah, blah, blah. If I hit him and he gets hurt, it's, it, where's that experience coming to play, you know? So maybe how people would say he recovers, whether he falls to his back or something or curls up. Um, listen, I have much, much more power than he does. And uh, is that Kyle Berhalio back there? <laughs> I like him. <laughs> I did an interview and I said that you're one of my top, uh, he's one of my top picks for uh, a middleweight. I like him. Yeah, but uh, yeah, exactly, right? Like there's a guy that's about to fight Paul Craig who I would love to fight, right? Um, he's a tough dude. He's going to make his way into the rankings. You're telling me he couldn't beat Jack or, he, or Jack's going to beat him or I can't, you know? So I think there's much, much tougher competition than Jack. Obviously, I got to get past him Saturday. But yeah, man, I mean, what am I here for? I'm here to test myself, put my, push myself to the limits and find out where that bitch in me lies, right? That's why I'm in this. I want to know how far I can go. And uh, I'm not going to let any man stand across from me and tell me that they're taking it from me. I love it. I guess last thing for me, I think you talked about your power. I think that's what a lot of people are pointing to. You play this thing out. Highlight real knockout. Is that what you're expecting to see here? I think I knocked Jack out. I mean, he's got a 29% take, 29 takedown accuracy. I've watched all of his videos extensively. Um, he's very desperate with a lot of his takedowns, and I think they're very slow. I think, he's, I think what you guys are going to realize is there's a big speed differential between me and Jack. There's a big boxing differential between me and Jack. Um, you know, everything, we can have all these plans all we want, but when you get in there and you feel somebody's presence and you feel their intention and you can see that look in their face that they're trying to hurt you, I think, it, I think sometimes it can either make or break somebody that you're fighting. So I want to hurt him um, and I'm ready to bang for 25 minutes. So yeah, let's go, brother. Let's rumble. Hey, Joe. Um, personally, what does a win over Jack Hermanson do for you? Well, on the outside, it, it puts me in the top 15, right? Um, I don't personally care about where I'm ranked, but from my life and where I've come from yet again and the odds that I've defied, it puts me right where I've always believed I belong. Um, and that's among the best. And uh, I don't think Jack is the best, and it's going to be a milestone marker for the people that have also sat here and said, experience this, experience that. I started jujitsu at four and a half years old. I started, this, I started competing at five years old in jiu-jitsu tournaments. This is my whole life. And when I tell you I couldn't be successful at anything else other than this sport, I truly mean that. This is my plan A, and that's all I have. Jack, 35 years old. He's been out a year. He got TKO'd by Roman Delite, who I think had an unimpressive, like a boring fight. Um, and, you know, I, I think Roman's tough, but... I just, yeah, I don't know, man. I might be overlooking the guy in some people's eyes, but I just don't see him being able to hurt me, man. Speaking of power, uh, apparently you have more, uh, more power than Francis Ngannou. Uh, where the hell does this power come from? Ready? This shit pisses me off. I hit the fucking machine, the same machine, and I hit it with a 16-ounce glove. For all these nerds out there that don't understand science, I hit it with a 16-ounce glove. That means I didn't even get to hit it as hard as I could because I had... I had a big pad. So I broke the record with a big glove. I broke it four or five times. I broke it in front of the operations guy. There was a heavyweight uh, from Brazil that was hitting it. 
Couldn't even come close to it. His coach hit it. Couldn't come close to it. Brendan Allen's coach, Tuco, hit it. Didn't come close to it. And they didn't want to give it to me officially. I don't know why. And then everybody makes this narrative about talking about fucking oiling up Dana's ass and shit. And that his, uh, what the fuck did he say? That it's like uh, Dana White trying to take out Naganyu. Bro, I got nothing, for, nothing but respect for anybody that's ever stepped in this cage. Um, that has ever done something to change their life. You know, he comes from the slums. You hear these stories all the time. You got people like Charles Oliveira or Francis Ninganyu. I mean, for fuck's sakes, even my teammate Andre, who's had his own. Like, we've all come from struggles to be something, and then I get discredited because I hit harder. Shit pisses me off, bro. Fuck those nerds, whoever told me that I didn't get that fucking score. I'll do it again. And just to say this, I had a torn rotator cuff when I hit it, and then I had to stop because I hurt myself. Well, damn. Um, Fuck those nerds. <laughs> um, How does it feel to share a card with, with uh, Jeremiah? I love Jeremiah Wells, man. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's somebody that's been in this game for a, a, a long time, and um, I have high expectations for him. You want to talk about a guy that can punch hard and a guy that brings that, that bad intentions? Dude, he was winning his last fight, and ah, he got caught, right? But, like, he's had some – he's exciting to watch, man. The problem is – it's like he doesn't talk that much. It's not his style, you know what I mean? So he's kind of under the radar, but he, uh, bro, devastating power, bad intentions. That's a bad dude, man. I, I don't ever let him hit me for free. <laughs> Speaking of teammates, uh, last time you were up on media day, you, you told everybody. Watch Sean that. Brady was going to whoop that ass. I did say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how, did, how, how good did it? Feel to get him to get him back in the win column, but also to like you know you, you called it and he went out there and did it. Yeah, he got himself back in the win column. I mean, we all know in the gym he's very he's he's the best grappler I think in our gym for MMA, um, or one of the best. And uh, yeah, I mean I, we know it. We know how good he is on the ground. We know how good he is. That's his area of expertise. You know, it's not the most exciting. And um, you know, sometimes fans don't appreciate what we actually do. This is mixed martial arts, um, but he did phenomenal, and I'm happy for him. I love that dude, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people slept on him. A lot of people keep sleeping on my team in general, man. I mean, like even Andre gone fighting fucking Michelle Pereira on fucking dudes on vacation, hardly fucking train, flies all the way across the world, you know, finally gets a new contract that he should have fucking had already. He was five and zero. Oh. And, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm salty, bro. I, I feel like a lot of people have thrown shade at my team, so fuck you guys. And uh, there's one fucking nerd out here that does media, and he said I always have a bad attitude, so I would love to smack that dude in his fucking face. <laughs> bro, you have no idea how frustrating it is sometimes being in my position. And I've never, I've never, I'm not somebody that says this to be funny. I know it comes off as funny, and I'll probably fucking laugh when my coach watches it because he's going to be like, you're nuts. But... Bro, somebody always discredits you, and that's something That's something just from the heart. It's like I got to get used to, you know what I mean? So many people talk shit, I, and I rarely, rarely get hate messages at all, um, if any. Um, but just some of these fucking guys, bro, they just, they just try to latch onto your nutsack like a bunch of fucking leeches just to talk about you. And it's like then you got all these people that come into your life, like how many messages I got on my phone and people pretending like they've always known I would be here and whatnot. Listen, if you didn't believe, don't try to hop on because I don't want you on the team. I got my inner circle. I'm good. That's my rant for the day. Last two for me. Um, there is a new middleweight champion. I just want to know your thoughts on the fight itself and then just Dreykus as, as a champion. Dreykus is a new champion. I don't know how he is. Um, he's a tough fighter, very complete fighter, you know. Um, I see holes, like if I was to fight him, I think obviously I would do well. Um, but that's just me as a competitor. Um, me as a fan, I, I like watching him. He's entertaining. He goes out there and he pushes, you know, get pedal to the metal. So streak, speaking as a fan and not as his competition, good for him, man. Um, first South African champion, and I love seeing that. Um, I was happy when Sean won, happy when he won, happy when Israel was a champion. I will never, I will never shit on another man's opportunity to uh, be a champion. Who's winning the Super Bowl on Sunday? I don't give a fuck. Joe, right here, brother. Well, I'm dog, OG. How does it feel to be in the UFC video game, and did they get your ratings right? I forgot to mention that, John. Yeah, dude, that 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 makes me emotional. You know, like it's um, yeah, it makes me emotional. I'll just leave it at that. And um, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> No worries. And um, you're always 
talking about, you know, being a proud American, representing America, bringing the flag into the office. I'm walking with the flag again. How important is that to you? And do you think that more Americans should support American fighters? 100%, man. We're the, we're, we're the only country that cheers for the opposite country. But, you know, it's just crazy. It's like I have foreign teammates, and all they talk about is their country, their country, their country. We're in this, and we take it for granted. And I think it's also the culture of our country. We're very ignorant. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I, I think more fighters need to stand up and be proud to wear that flag and be happy to be an American and, and make this country a safer, you know, better place to be in. And, and there's so many people taking each other's lives over the dumbest shit. And it just, I don't know. I want to, I want to see people care for each other in our country and represent our own people and push our own athletes, not sit there and fucking become a troll, you fucking nerd. And like send a, a hate message on me or my teammates or, you know what I mean? Like, it's one thing to be a fan of, like, everybody takes free speech to a whole nother fucking level with Instagram. So, yeah, I mean, I think we need to uh, rep our flag a whole lot more than we do and give it much more respect than we do. Quick one for me, but thanks for taking the time, by the way. Um, you mentioned nerds don't understand science. Hey, included, but I do understand family. You mentioned you had, like, 20 folks with you. Who was able to come that didn't before? That makes this more meaningful. Like now I'm gonna name drop everybody. So I got Andre, who I've been training with for almost 10 years. I love that guy, man. I I want him to do so well, and you know, uh, you know, he wasn't <laughs> including me, man. So I'm I at a certain point I was like, man, if you don't make some change, I don't know if I'll make it to the UFC. Like I, it was never from an ill place. I, he's in the UFC, went five and zero, you know, and now he's on a new contract, and you know he's getting himself right and and just getting better and better and training more, and uh, you know, so Andre's out here. I got my buddy from high school, Chandler Henry. Um, I got Sean Brady's out here, J Jeremiah, Pat Sabatini, Nurse Tom Rosabayev. We know what a problem he's gonna be. Um, you know, we got my strength coach, Adam Ferris. Uh, who else? We got Christian Bobey. He's an amateur. He just came back from ACL surgery. He's never been on a fight week. We brought him out. Um, who else? We got a bunch more people. Jonathan Webb, my jiu-jitsu coach. I'm going to name them all because I don't get to say this all the time. So uh, Ito Babaluite, who's a 4-0 pro, getting ready to defend his title for Ring of Combat. 170 pounder. We got Igor, who's from Ukraine. I don't know how to say his last name. Uh, his best friend is uh, the former Bellator 170 champ, a Amosov, or Amazov, something like that. Kid's going to be a problem, man. So uh, I'm going to make sure uh, I didn't forget any of the fighters. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, we got, we got a whole squad, man. So it means a lot to me to be able to bring Igor and people like Christian Bobe. Um We got a lot of talent on our team, man. We got a lot of talent, and we, uh, we push each other. I always push the red line, so... That has never changed, by the way, in preparation. We always do five fives, brother, so I can go five fives. <laughs> and speaking of, you know, leveling up and whatnot, I know we haven't had a, a event in a while on Super Bowl weekend, and there's been some memorable ones for, like, uh, Jose Aldo and Frankie Edgar. What does that mean to you? Not just to be on the poster. You mentioned getting emotional, but Super Bowl weekend, like Joe Pfeiffer and Hermanson weekend, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't. I care about I care about my fight night. I don't care about the Super Bowl. I don't care about Super Bowl weekend. I care about the fact that how many eyes are going to see it. That's what I care about, you know. I think look, I can lose this fight. I've talked a lot of shit um that I believe true. Um but, you know, outside people always call it talking shit if you're confident or arrogant or whatever the case is. But uh yeah, I mean, I believe that with a devastation or a dismantling of Jack on Saturday, I have pending superstar status. I have the name, I have the fucking receding hairline, I got the fucking punching power unofficially that you fuckers won't give me. And uh yeah, I'm ready to rock, man. So um yeah, I'm excited, brother. I'm very excited. Right on man, good luck on Saturday. Get that star power. Thank you. Hey Joe. Um, you were saying earlier about uh, you know your career was supposed to be over at one point, but now you're in the main event on the same site where Dana White said, you know, be like Joe Pfeiffer. Are you doing anything crazy to remember the week, like maybe get a Ferrari or anything like that? I have a Ferrari. I have uh, thanks to Royalty Exotics. Plug them. Um, they are here in Vegas every time since before I was on this main event spot. They have given me a free car. Um, they have taken care of me every single time. Um, Houston's the owner. He's, I talked to him 40 minutes before I got out here. He's a really successful man. And, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, they, they gave me an 812 super fast, uh, which Dana White actually let me drive. He had one. Car is stupid fast. But, yeah, I always try to get something nice. Um, I like cars, man. That's my passion outside of fighting. So uh, it always makes me feel good and uh, makes me excited, man. It brings an appreciation of what I'm trying to get to. How, how long have you had it? Where have you been driving it? Uh, I got it yesterday when I landed, and uh, this is the second time I drove it. I drove it to the Airbnb, and I drove it here. <laughs> I don't drive too much, man, when I'm cutting too much weight, but, um, yeah, it's just nice to have it. I'll probably, uh, once I make weight, I'll take a nice little drive and just probably go through a Rev Rocks or something and just visualize, man. I, I don't know what it is, this fight. When I fought Abdul, I had nightmares of getting knocked out every fucking day, every day, every day. I'm very confident for this fight, and uh, whatever's God, whatever God's plan is for me, uh, I am religious, but, you know, I'm a Christian, and I, I've been trying to lean more on my faith that whatever God's plan is, um, it's already set in motion, and uh, I just try to worry about the performance and not the results. So whatever is meant to be for me, brother, I will turn the page, and that's what's meant to be. But I will give everything I have to get this win. It's a head-turning car, just like your fighting style. It's a what? A head-turner of a car. I mean, yeah, look at me. I'm fucking white mystery up in this bitch. I'm coming. <laughs>